We've seen how we can use the factory loops that ship with Strum GS2, but we can also create our own loops and loop packs. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. And I've assembled a few in the last several videos. I've put together my own strumming patterns, as you'll recall, by just programming up MIDI patterns with different strumming key combinations here. So I want to save these as my own loop packs so that they'll appear in the menu here and I can use them in any instance of strum in any DAW in any song. So what I need to do is have it respect a few rules. Now, first thing is all the MIDI events have to be on MIDI channel one. So I can look here and see in this DAW that that's no problem. They're all on one. We have to also normalize all the parameters. So all the quantizing and everything is burnt in permanently to the file. And I've done that already, but it's different in each DAW and this one under region parameters here, we can apply all the parameters permanently. Now, the other thing is that the loops must start at the beginning at bar one and they have to contain information all the way to the end. For example, let me just bring this one back to bar one. Right now it'll be an eight bar loop, but if I extend this like that and export it like that, it'll be a full 12 and a half bar loop, even though there are only MIDI events at the beginning. So you gotta make sure it starts and ends where you want. So let's line these up all starting at bar one. And as I said, it's a necessary requirement to exporting them. I'll just zoom a bit here and get them. And once we do that, we can name them and export them all pretty quickly. One last one. There we go. Now, the other thing is that the tempo and time signature has to be defined at the beginning of the loop and it can't change during the course of the loop. So only one tempo, one time signature, and it needs to be in MIDI file format, either zero or one, which is fine. Those are the only popular formats that are used these days. And as well, it has to have the .mid extension added to the end, which again, isn't a problem. You can add it manually if you need to, but most DAWs, when they export MIDI files, add it on automatically. So the idea is that we name them all and we end the name with the letter, either C, D, E, F, G, A, or B, that correspond with the seven keys that we want them to be triggered by. So let's start by exporting the first one. And it's a little bit different in each DAW, but here under the export menu, we have selection is MIDI file. And I have a little folder on my desktop set up. So let me just name this. So there I've called it EK Funk Pack C, and I don't need to add the .mid, it'll be done for me. And let's select the next one. I'll use my key command just to speed it up. And I'll go to the same folder there and I'll just name this one D. And you can see the extension's been added on. And we'll go through real quick and do each one of these. Go to the folder on the desktop and name this one E. And next one F, folder on the desktop. Rename it with the new letter that I want it to be triggered by. Two more desktop folder, and I'll name this one G. And I'll do one more with A. I don't have a seventh one ready, but that's fine. I'll just use the ones that I have here. And this one will be named A. So that's done. So that's fine. Let me just mute all of these right now. And let's switch to the finder. And here is that desktop folder with these MIDI files that I've just exported. And they have to be placed in the following location. At the root level of the hard drive, it goes into your library folder, then application support, applied acoustic system, strum GS2, MIDI library, and you can place it in either the factory or factory electric. I'm going to place it in factory electric. And let me just select these and hold down option to copy them over and I'll be prompted for my password. That's fine. And now they're in here. So now they should appear in the DAW. Let's bring back strum. And I'm just going to zoom a little bit here. And in Factory Electric, there we go, EK Funk Pack. So now let me just loop this. I should be able to play and trigger using C through A. So that works. So let's just review this procedure and there's a couple of tips as well. So all the MIDI events have to be on channel one and you need to normalize all the parameters. The loops have to begin at the start of the file and finish at the end of the region you're exporting. 
There can't be any tempo or time signature changes throughout the loop. The loop has to be in MIDI format 0 or 1 and have the .mid extension added. And they should be named with one of these letters at the end of the name so that they correspond to the key that you want them triggered from. And on the Mac OS, they're stored in library application support, Applied Acoustic Systems, Strum, MIDI Library, and on Windows, that's in the Program Files folder and then a similar directory. Now, a couple of tips for getting the most out of these MIDI files. You can slightly vary the velocities of the strumming keys in order to get more of a lively result and more variation. If the loop is short, mine were eight bars, but if they're short, it might be preferable to repeat some of the same patterns many times with different velocities for each repetition. So if you have a short loop, just export it several times with different velocities. And if it includes chords, make sure that they're all quantized so that there's always a strumming key played at the same time. And avoid using MIDI controllers that can be changed by the user, things like pitch bend or mod wheel. We'll continue with more in the next video.